And here we are with Continuum starting on the attack side. Now, right off the get-go, we're seeing something different that we haven't seen before from Continuum on a clubhouse push, and that's going to be the Recruit Shield. Something Young is well known for. Yo I mean, he did a lot in earlier seasons. Yes. And has shown a lot of success with in some pushes. We've seen him do it a lot for that particular push on the uh, construction tunnel. I would imagine that's where he's going to use it again, unless there's a strat we just have not seen this season. But it is interesting. I do like that we're seeing a little bit of something different as well from the EU side. We're seeing Frost brought out. Not a common operator chosen for this bomb site, as usually there's another operator you're probably going to need. But in this case, we'll see if those traps maybe actually help slow down that recruit shield. Yeah, and I mean, taking a look at the offensive side, going, going back to Continuum, there are two operators which have almost been a guaranteed pick since they arose in the Pro League competitive scene, and that has been Blackbeard and Capitel. Yeah. Neither of which we're seeing here. It's definitely a big surprise. I mean, bringing Sludge and Buck as well is, is not necessary all the time. However, for the strat that they're using, it might just be a key part of it. Um, Buck. You see Canadian going droning for them up here. Usually he's going to be the one to go and attack the kitchen, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, probably going to be droning to clear out that area for that. But then the question is, what is what is Sledge for then at that point? Yeah, so my, my opinion or what I forecast Sledge being used for is if they're going to be pushing down through the garage hall, they possibly want to get into church from that, that water heater or generator tunnel. Yeah. And that's what Sledge can definitely be used for, getting in there nice, quick, silently. But seeing as how most of the attackers have started out by construction, you can already see Thermite moving over there. I wouldn't be surprised if it's already been opened up, that construction entrance. Yeah, we've seen a lot of success with this Recruit Shield strat, although uh, we have seen some good counters to it. Not sure if EU side, if, if Zisu is prepared for this, as they did probably see it during the final play days. Mm -hmm. So they've got to at least be thinking about it. Yeah, and we are going to see Young pushing into that construction tunnel. He's already making his way in there with that Recruit Shield. And I, I, I want to say that we're going to see some great just push from that, some, some good distraction. Now, c coming up into the bar is going to be Necrox. He's playing Ash at the moment. And he's going to move on over into Stockroom, see if that drop has been opened up, at which it has, and he's going to play right here for a little bit. Yeah, that's usually where we see Capito playing, but since they don't have a Capito, it does make sense to maybe use Ash, especially being able to open up some of that wall there, which is often reinforced, but took advantage of it not being. Yeah, and Boonchi's going to be droned out by the Ash, looking down to the top. Young's already made it down towards the arc, the archives, or the uh, the Arsenal room. Shata's there, able to push him back just a little bit, put some bullets into his shield, push him back even further, taking 50% of his health down. We are now halfway under round one. One here. Take a look over here. Shot is going to get the first kill onto Retro. And NVK has also been injured at the bottom of the main stairs. He will be revived, though, by Canadian. And Canadian's going to go back upstairs to the kitchen. That was going to be inside of the Memorial Hall. And NVK knows he's there, trying to fire through the doorway into the hall. He just isn't going to land any shots just yet. Vapo, though, has taken quite a bit of damage, as well as Boonsi. Shots has taken some as well. Young, again, has been inside of the tunnel, causing the distraction over there by Shati. And I want to say that it's going to be a hard-fought battle in that construction tunnel. Yeah, coming down low on time here. They're going to have to make a push, but already taking one down. Yeah, so Canadian's going to get the shots from the kitchen hall. He's going to get both onto Wilkie and Shatta, opening up that floor, taking away the angles from that kitchen and from the Arsenal room down above, or down below. Necrox has managed to make his way into the Arsenal room, going to try to pre-fire into the garage tunnel where he knows Boonsi is. Ketamistara is going to get killed off by NVK and coming in down through. Boonsi's going to have to make a peek here. He spots and will get the shot into NVK. It is now a two on one. All up to Necrox. He sees one. Vapo takes out Canadian. Now we've got Necrox who's being pinched here. Gas grenade going to go off and the push is going to come in. Boonsi will not get the shot if it's going to be Vapo. Finishing off Necrox. The fuser was planted, so now they're going to have to get it destroyed. But with no attackers left to pause it, it's going to be a win here for the European team of Sisu. That started out being like Zisu favored, then went back over to being CTM favored, and then just could not hold it at the end. They just they got the plant down, couldn't hold it, but some great kills there. Canadian being one of the best buck players I've seen, not a surprise to get him, see him get two from up there, mm -hmm. but it was not easy after that. NVK getting down probably didn't help slowing down their push, and Young not being able to continue with that shield push through the tunnel was a great start, but I felt like everyone was a bit out of position by getting, especially by NVK getting down to there, mm -hmm. slowing down their push, and time is everything, especially to push like that. Yeah, and like you had said, um, it, went, it seemed to go CSU favor, then continue in favor, then CSU back and forth just in that one round. Yeah. To me, I think that highlights exactly what the analyst desk and us were talking about, about how close this match is going to be. Absolutely. We are seeing them bring the Blackbeard here on Zisu's side, but not the Capitao, which mm -hmm. still surprises me that they would rather bring a Thatcher in a Sledge than one of those being replaced with the Capitao. And also, uh, you know, not bringing that Buck. We saw what Buck did damage-wise last time 
was super important to their tech. The defender's also switching things up, bringing a dock. Yeah, it almost looks like we're going to have an exact opposite of the defensive strat here, where they went no rook, no dock, no three armored operator, to now we're on continuum, where continuum is bringing just all the heavy operators. Yeah, they definitely want to be able to take a few shots. Yeah, and I, I, I liked, I, I like seeing what we're, what we're, what's going on here. We've got Boonsy's coming outside by the kennel spawn. He's going to move on into garage and likely push down that way, where we also have Wilkies over by the construction entrance with Kit Mistaro, and it looks like they might be pushing in from there. Yeah, that uh, that Blackbeard pushed down the the uh, construction or the uh, utility tunnel, something we've seen a lot of, but I feel like it was starting to fall out of favor uh, in favor of pushing like the construction tunnel instead, mm -hmm. which we saw Young do last time with that recruit shield. But there is a lot to be said for this push, although I think it tends to fare a little bit better if you bring a teammate like Sledge, for example, coming with him, especially to help date out some of that barbed wire as Blackbeard does not come with grenades that he Agreed. can take it out with. Agreed. And it looks as though Boonsy's going to be playing solo by himself, droning out his way down the garage hall. And Vapo's going to come on in from that recreational area, going in towards the strip club and kitchen. Now, we're going to take a look over here at Ash, Wilkie playing Ash right now. He's inside of the kitchen right now, doing similar to what Buck did, but going to utilize the breach charges for it. It looks as though the, the kitchen drop hatch has been opened up by Thermite. That's Kata Mistaro doing a great job opening it up. And it looks as though Necrox might be trapped. Oh, the feet from Retro there will be spotted behind the shelf. Wilkie's able to tap just a couple bullets to him. And now Wilkie's just going to cause a little bit of more chaos as Retro is now stuck. That hatch being open is something we saw a lot of in earlier seasons. Kind of fell out of favor, but you see why it's used. Provides such a nice angle if you can stay alive up there. Mm -hmm. Now Vapo's going to do his work, opening up some of the kitchen hallway floor and also working his way down the main stairwell. This is going to give him that angle into church. And he's also going to pull his way back down. Now we have the first kill being on Wilkie once again as he takes out Retro from Continuum, finally being destroyed back behind the shelf. We do have Necrox, though, who's still inside of the tunnel, I want to say. And we're going to have to see. Smoke grenades are going to go down. This is going to cause a little bit of room for the attackers to push on into the main hall downstairs. And Wilkie's already opening up some of the floor. That's a great job. NVK able to get the shot into Vapo, though, evening it out 4-4 with that trade-off. Shots is still in the back of Arsenal room, though. And we've got Necrox still inside of the tunnel. Canadians pushing on in. He will be picked off by Shatta and then easily traded down by Young. Necrox is also able to pick up a kill into Boonsy. It's now a two on three. NVK will be down and finished off. Wilkie's able to get NVK. Necrox takes the shotgun onto Shatta. It is now all up to Wilkie pushing on down the main hall. We're going to see Young right behind the ammo crates inside of Arsenal. He's going to push into the church. And he's got the. Does not have the diffuser though. He's going to have to push on into Garage. Able to get it. Look around to the left. Young hears him moving around. Necrox is able to get the SMG 11 shot onto the dome of Wilkie. Finish it off. That's Continuum taking round two. That was definitely a, a hard defense at the end there. Wilkie getting a lot more mobility than I would expect in a 2v1 situation. But Continuum playing it tight and just holding their angles there at the end mm. definitely paid off. Necrox had a good long shot from the SMG 11, which is, you know, if you whiff a few shots on that, it could be difficult to, to make up for because of the long reload yeah. that you're going to have to deal with with so few bullets. But he made it work. He held his angle, took advantage of. It looked like Wilkie being a little confused as to what to do, kind of dancing over by the mini bar in church there before going over to get that diffuser. Yeah, I, I, I want to say that Young and um, Necrox worked very well together there. They, you saw Young rotate around from the doorway. He heard that Wilkie was inside of the garage tunnel, and he had to have called that out to Necrox. I wouldn't be surprised if Young actually made noise himself to bait him out even more. Yeah, and that barbed wire being left in the hallway too didn't help for uh, Wilkie trying to make his way in there. Mm -hmm. I, I do imagine they're going to be a little more careful of that kitchen uh, being opened up next time. Maybe some C4 coming out, as that did hurt them quite a bit taking out Retro. Yeah, we can see pretty evenly across the board here. We've got two kills from almost every person on the team, which means it's close. You're not having yeah. one shining star on the team, and it's going to be the teams working well together with their strats. Of course, kills aren't everything in this. You need a lot of utility operators too, but it's nice to see a spread like that. Yep. So coming onto the defense side here for Sisu is going to be Rook making an appearance this time. No Frost. However, we do see a Pulse making here. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Uh, obviously, they got a plan for where he's going to stand and where they're going to try and identify. He was even better for identifying where people are attacking from outside when it was uh, pre-nerf, but now he is a little less effective in doing so. Yeah, and we see Kata Mistaro being upstairs inside of the shower, right by the master bedroom. And he's going to be playing this lurking role, but I wouldn't be surprised if it gets droned out. A good team's going to drone this out. You can see Canadian opening up the drop hatch, and he's droning out Jim right now. We'll eventually move into the master bedroom. 
And the question is whether or not they're going to be able to do anything about that. If they drone him, he's just going to move. I doubt he's just going to sit there. They do spot him, lose the drone. And but. this is Canadian pushing on down very quickly. He knows he's there. The shots of the cross from Necrox able to get Kaden Mistaro coming out of the kitchen. And NVK is able to get the trade onto Wilkie. It is now a five on three. Still two thirds of the round left to go. A very strong start for Continuum. Clearing out that top floor cost two of the defenders their lives. Having control of that top floor is really important when you want to make a plant, especially on that pool table. You want to be able to defend it from above. Yeah, and we saw Vapo able to knock out Retro. That's the Thermite player for the attackers. Now, whether or not they were able to get that stripper door wall or that stripper wall opened up, that strip club wall, it it could be so detrimental here for the attackers in that option. Yeah, that could be game over for their strat. They're really going to have to rethink this, but that's Ooh. a good way to make an impact. There it is. Having to only deal with two can make a push possible without that wall being blown open. Yeah, and so here we have it at four on two, a minute 15 left to go. It's all up to Vapo and Boonsi. Now, Canadian's going to finish droning out Kitchen and that main stairwell. Calls it all clear. He's going to move on down and see if he can pick off another kill. NVK able to get Boonsi. It is now all up to Vapo, who is inside of the bar. We're going to see incendiary arrows go out right on top of the bars where Vapo's going to hop up to. Canadian's holding the right side. We see Young inside playing Blackbeard inside of the strip club. Canadian's going to push on over, spots him, and will finally get the pistol kill right onto Vapo, finishing it off. That's Continuum taking round three, two to one right now. Well, I definitely did not. I don't, I don't think that strat went the way Continuum wanted. Obviously, losing control of that strip club side put a big dent in what they were trying to push. Mm -hmm. But their ability to just kill from that top down, come down those stairs, just get all of those kills before they even get into the room was super critical. And you saw at the end, similar to what we saw before, a 2v1 there from Continuum. Mm -hmm. And they know how to work together as a team like that to take out that last guy. Yeah, and this is what we've talked about throughout the previous matches and previous seasons has been, this is one of those turning point rounds at the moment because we are now on a quote unquote fa attacker favored bomb site. Yeah. We are in, are in the bar and stock room. So so if Continuum can hold this here, they'll go up in a 3-1 lead and then have the benefit of going downstairs to the basement for the final defensive round. What we're seeing though is an interesting plan from the attackers to potentially go for a B-side Kennels push with Montaigne. Mm -hmm. Something we've seen from some other teams, it has kind of been mixed results. If you can pull it off and keep Montaigne alive, pretty much right where Wa Valkyrie was right there, yep. he can push up, he can hold that door while you make that plan. If and you can take him out. It's it's a big problem, just like you know. It's gonna be even gonna even time. worse for if you take out Montaigne early on. It's gonna be a worse problem here for Sisu for the simple fact that they don't have another option. Yeah, they don't yeah. have a thermite to go from from the strip club into the pool table. Absolutely, they put out open a lot the, the of kitchen hallway. There. Yeah. So the question is, is Continuum gonna be able to spot that and counter it? They've got to be ready for a B push. It's something European teams are a little more preferential to than just a strip club push. Ooh, and it's but gonna be Bootsy coming around the, the van and just annihilating Necrox. That was a really nice shot. I, I do see a bullet hole in his window, though. Obviously, that shield right there saved his life. It did, definitely. 100%. Boonsy, however, going to stay outside by the front porch. He's now going to keep an eye onto that main lobby area. Wilkie's managed to get underneath, though. He's now dropped into the utility room downstairs by the garage tunnel. I would have push. expected him to be opposite on yeah. top of cash room, opening up the stock entrance. We rarely see a push like this from below for an attack on this bomb site, but he's got a plan in mind here, and he's... Trying to work it on Young here. He's waiting for it. I believe these Young will be droned out here in just a moment, I believe, by one of the attackers. And Wilkie's just waiting to open up that drop hatch. He's waiting till he's, he's waiting right for it. This is, this is the trap door of the century. Open it up and he's going to see oh. him. Doesn't get the kill. He's going to pull out the nade, though, and potentially knock him yeah, down. That was Young's going to have to push out and expose himself as Kenny Mistaro is playing that Montaigne is going to try to get the kill, but Young has finally been down as he rushes out into the hall where Bootsy was there for the trade-off. Canadian able to get Vapo, though. That's the can, that is going to be the capital down for the count. Now, seeing as how we have Young, who is down, it's a four on three at the moment. Still half the round left to go. Kata Mastaro taking his good old time before he goes full shield and pushes on in for the bomb plant that Shad is going to do behind him. It is looking good for the attackers, though, as the defenders don't have a good defense set up against that at the moment. So if they can make that push and then just hold it, it's not going to be good for Continuum. Yeah, and this is actually a really good setup here from the attackers. You've got Wilkie outside by the kitchen hallway. Canadian finally pushes on in, but he will be down by Wilkie. And now it is a four on f two. I'm sorry, a three on two. Here we have a... Actually, we did see Valkyrie get picked back up, ironically enough. So with that trade-up, it was a four on three. Now it's a two on three, a three on three here. 
Kenny Mistara finally gets bull shield. He's going to take all the bullets and be that wall that he needs to be. Shatz is right behind him, trying to plant that diffuser. Wilkie's staying outside a kitchen, and he's holding onto that kitchen hallway. Diffuser gets planted. Wilkie's role is just to sit here, make sure there's not going to be a flank. Shatta, though, able to come out from behind and get young. Great job, Shatta, though. Now, Shatta still actually managed to go above, it looks like. And Wilkie's still holding onto the wall. From above, coming out by the garage. Smoke will be finished off. Shadda gets one. Wilkie gets the final kill from Retro outside by the kitchen hallway. That was a really solid attack. That initial the kill on the spawn uh, peak that uh, uh, Jaeger was trying to do really did not set a good tone for that round for Continuum. Yeah. They still fought a good fight, but that Montane push was timed perfectly. Wait until they were weak. And Wilkie holding that crossfire was amazing because Canadian pushing and trying to do something about Montaigne was just completely countered. Agreed, agreed. 100. I mean, we, we've watched Montaigne take at least two magazines. Yeah. Two entire soaking magazines up just MP5. soaking it up. I mean, no. that that put a big dead. They didn't have any other angles. I, if it was a, if it was a choosing a, a bullet sponge like that or a Mr. Clean wipe, I'd probably go with the bullet sponge there. Yeah, I, and I like the way Shatta was expecting someone to come out the garage door, which was their only other counter, mm -hmm. and just completely yeah. punishing him for it. <laughs> so that was really well played by Zizu. We were talking about this with some of the other players before about Montaigne strats. It's very difficult to pull them off twice. Mm -hmm. I would be amazed if we saw that again, but if we do, that it may go down very differently. I, I think what we're gonna see here is another. Very close matchup. We saw this first round go back and forth, back and forth, and it looks as though the similar setup's gonna happen. Now, Kaden Mistar is not gonna play Frost this time. It looks like he's gonna be playing Bandit. But other than that, we basically have the exact same defensive setup yeah. and the exact same offense. And we do have that, yeah, that, that young shield again. The question is, is he going to do more with it this time? Is Retro going to stay alive a little longer? He was the first one to get picked off last time. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine they got most of what they needed to open with him. Obviously, that construction one is not too hard to open without being countered in any way. So that was the critical one. But Yeah, we've also seen young trade out the recruit shield at points to go with Blitz. We've seen him be yeah. play Blitz here on Clubhouse, and it worked out for him. We're going to see if he makes the same kind of push through the construction tunnel, which it looks like he will because we do see Retro over there as well. So that wall is going to get opened up, then Retro is going to move on into the Clubhouse and eventually open up one more drop hatch. They are doing their initial joining, though they de do need to have some idea. I like that Mute's being used as something that I think is a good counter for a lot of these teams that do a lot of droning. Mm -hmm. Being able to deny their intel makes it so they walk in a little more blind, especially with a shield operator who's got to play it a little more carefully and try and give intel to his team without those drones. Yeah, and what we actually saw there from Mute and fr from that Mute jammer was as the drone was going up the stairs, it was still jamming him. So I can see the defense team. I can see Sisu playing mute jammers in a place that kind of blinds them, makes them waste time without looking for a lurker. So that yeah. you don't need to have the roamer there to, to kind of waste time for him. It's just yeah. the jammer itself. And you don't have to worry as much about them getting shot out because you're mostly just trying to deny drones, mm -hmm. not trying to deny a whole lot else. So by the time they get in there to shoot that jammer, you're hopefully already doing something about it. Yeah, we see Young already making his way down the tunnel. Canadian's going to open up the kitchen hallway floor. And NVK is going to move his way down in just a moment here. Now, Canadian's making sure there's no cam, no person inside of the hallway, but Wilkie's still inside of that motorcycle hall. He's going to look to try to get the shots as we have NVK pushing on down. You saw the ghost shots from NVK push on in. Move me, clear out Wilkie a little bit. Wilkie's playing very cautious, though, holding the soft angle. And that's exactly what you want from a player there. He's getting a little... Getting a little crazy pushing as much as he can here, but his, his teammates need to make the pushes on the other sides to make this work, or he's leaving himself a little bit exposed. Yeah, and Wilkie, because they know that the control room has been opened up, they've got the stock room opened up, uh, I'm sorry, the con construction tunnel opened up, Wilkie knows that he can sit inside Memorial Hall and just wait. He doesn't, he's not going to be exposed from the drop hatch. Both thermite charges have already been used. Boone sees inside of the church. Vapo exposes himself just a little bit. Will take a monstrous oh, amount of damage. No. Down to about five or ten health. But from behind, Wilkie gets the kill on NVK as he pushes into Memorial Hall. And Wilkie's like, great shot. Shot, he's able to get these shots onto Canadian. And Young will trade it off onto Vapo using the, the recruit shield. Pushing on in. Boone sees able to get Necrox and now he's going to be pushed back. Shotzi versus Young right here. Who's going to get the win? We've got Young pushing on, playing peekaboo around the corner, ring around the rosy. It is going to be Retro getting Kata Mastaro, and we also have Shata who's been downed. And Thermite tries to go for the kill inside of Garage Hall, but will be killed off by Boonsy. Wilkie able to get Young for the final kill, and that's going to be Sisu taking round five.
We definitely saw CC a lot more adapted to that attack this time. Although, oddly enough, it was the shield and Thermite, the first two killed last time, mm -hmm. that actually lasted the longest this time. Did a good job. I really like the crossfire from Retro, helping Young out there when he was in a tough spot, okay. trying to fight too with that shield. One of the things that's interesting about a shield uh, fighting like that with the hip fire mm -hmm. is he's going to have to really be smart about how he conserves his ammo. He can't just spray a ton of shots because he can't reload safely. Yes, definitely, 100%. And I mean, like, like we saw, I mean, with the recruit shield, if you go the FBI SWAT, you've got the 5.7, and that has the most bullets per magazine that any of the pistols has, and it's 21 bullets. And I think that's a, an important reason why he chooses that as well. Correct, and that, that's why you would definitely choose that over a blitz. If you if you're not planning on using the flash from Blitz's shield, go with the recruit shield because you're you're running the same speed, you're the same armor. It's just a matter of what weapon are you going to use. Yeah. And I think it looks like we're seeing basically the same lineups from both teams here as they are going to be uh, as the last time they fought in this particular setup. So the question is, is it going to go down differently this time? Mm -hmm. And I think one thing to note here, as we do see some of the players getting more kills than others on the team, is with the the, the strategies, with the teams working together and playing different roles and stuff. Not everyone's going to get a chance to get a kill. Yeah, you're it's not about what the you shield, do. For example, getting yeah. a ton. You, you, it's about what you do with the role that you're given on the strategy that you're particularly pursuing. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you can see Montaigne obviously from that one round probably not probably didn't pick up any kills. Agreed. Agreed. 100. percent So here we are underway in the sixth round in the attack phase, and we are going to see bomb sites go back downstairs into the arsenal room and into the church. Now Necrox is going to move on over, lay a little bit of barbed wire downstairs in the uh, the tunnel, the construction tunnel. It almost looks like they they might expect the other team to try and do what they did. Mm -hmm. I, and I joke about this a lot during the play days, is that teams always want to counter what they do, expecting the other team to do the same. Yep. A lot of people will play the defense for their own offense instead yeah. of the defense for the offense they're going up against. And I almost I almost only see it happen when it doesn't make sense. Yep. And you, so you've got Chate, and you also have Boonsi pushing on in through the garage tunnel. Looks like Shat is going to put down the Claymore, wait for a flank, and potentially push out that way. Boonchi's able to drop, though, and now he's going to finish droning himself down the garage tunnel. Still two-thirds of the round left to go. Retro's actually on top. It looks like possibly a shelf or an ammo crate. Peeking on down towards the garage tunnel. Vapo's going to be opening up most of the kitchen floors we've seen him do in the past. You can hear the second charge of Thermite being blown to bits right now. C4 is going to blow, oh. but he's standing on top of the reinforced drop hatch, and that will save his life. Kitchen hatch is going to get opened up. Canadian just not able to get that C4 kill. That, that could have been really good for them. We've seen that a lot from Canadian over these seasons. Mm -hmm. And so with that, Wilkie's now inside of the kitchen, looking through the draw patch that we saw Katie Mastaro able to open up. Taking a look over at Boonsie, though. Boonsie's downstairs. He's going to be moving towards that garage tunnel. Now he's looking through that little pixel angle. Doesn't see anyone, so he knows it's all clear. And with that, he's going to look to the left. Big hole in the wall opened up. NVK kind of cornered at the moment. He can't really face down the hallway. If he moves over left anymore, he's going to get in the crosshairs of Boonsi. Minute 10 left to go. Flashbang's going to go out. That's going to allow him to push on in. NVK going to get across, though. Move on over more into the church hall. We've got still five on five at the moment. Young's trying to get the angle on a shot at, but with that, Young finally peeks around, strafes across, and gets the kill. NVK also able to get the kill onto Boonsi. Vapo will get the trade onto Canadian. It's now a three on four with 45 seconds left to go. Vapo's inside of Arsenal Room. We'll take a couple bullets here from Thermite, pushing on down. Now Vapo was able to get Necrox. Kedim Staro able to get Retro, which is looking really good right now here for Sisu in a three on two. Young's pretty damaged, and NVK's got full health. NVK's right now inside a church, right on the other side of the wall, along with Young. Missing that shot probably cost them a little bit here. So we also see right now Wilkie's planning that diffuser. Vapo trying to get the shots here onto Young, but Young's looking around the corner and able to get it down. As he moves on into Arsenal Room, he will be picked off by Kata Mastaro. It's now all to NVK, coming out of the motorcycle hall, down the main entrance corridor here into the Arsenal Room. He saw Thermite's head, takes a look for it, but doesn't get the shots off. They now know exactly where NVK is. Kata Mastaro trying to look down the main hall from the doorway. He's pushing on in, and it will be Wilkie falling to the likes of NVK. It is now a one-on-one -on -one coming around from the ammo crates. NVK doesn't know exactly where to look, and we we see Kata Mastaro peek up his head like a prairie dog, and he will get the shot right onto NVK, and that's going to be Sisu taking round six here. It is now four to two. To be honest, I'm surprised that uh, Kata Mastaro won that fight. Mm -hmm. he, 
Thermite's gun is not exactly the best gun in the game, and Jaeger's gun is really good. Agreed. So that right there with NVK, just his lack of information versus Thermite's information, I think made all the difference in the world. And that just shows you knowing where your enemy's positioned. And we saw that quite a bit when uh, when Young, for example, took out, I, I believe it was Vapo on the floor, mm -hmm. just knowing where he was versus dodging back and forth, it just paid, it made all the difference. Agreed. And, and one of the things I was actually thinking NVK was going to win that as well is because when they were playing Prairie Dog back and forth, left and right around the shelving, we saw... Um, we, we saw Thermite lift his head up. He yeah. lifted his head up, then went back down, and then came back up for a second peak and was able to get the kill. So I was highly anticipating NVK to take advantage of that peak, realize exactly where he was, and was able to get the shots. And unfortunately, it was Katie Mistaro for the win. You know, I was talking to some of the Zisu guys before mm -hmm. uh, the games earlier today, and they had warned me that, that Katie Mistaro is a very good Thermite. Definitely, yes. And I yes. think we saw that there. I, I, I have heard rumors that he is the best Thermite here in the world. Well, so we saw exactly back. some of the reasons yeah. why as that just happened. So we're back up at the bar, though, so this is anyone's game. Definitely an attacker in favor, but we've seen some good defenses as well. Yeah, and Kaden Mistar is going to move back upstairs right in. He's not going to stay in the shower this time. I know. He most likely will be droned out, and if he's not careful, he will be pinched as he was before. Is Wookie going for a spawn peek there? That'd be interesting, or maybe just getting a camera out. We'll have to see. I mean, they were two of them up there, so... Now Canadian's going to move on over. We do see the Capitale making an appearance this time, instead of the Buck. Canadian's going to stay on top of the central roof along with NVK. Now NVK's going to open it up. Canadian's going to drone it out for him. And they're going to get ready for a nice quick push. Now last time this cost them dearly hiding up here. Obviously, Kingdom of Sorry not making the same mistake as last time, but they did so much killing from up here. They actually reinforced You can see Wilkie. both of them. They're looking at both of the angles from the drop hatches. You've got Wilkie and Kadem Starro both inside of the hallway here. Some good teamwork and coverage. They re they really don't look like they're defending the bar a whole lot, Ooh, though. NVK is going to drop down, try to confront Wilkie. Wilkie's able to get the shot on to him without taking too much damage, although he did eat a bullet or two. Now we hear the thermite charge being opened up. I want to say that that is going to be out by the strip club wall. We'll have to wait a moment and just take a look and see. Now Canadian's still going to stay up here. He knows that there's going to be one or two. He's going to drop. Wilkie's going to overexpose himself and be paying the price for it. There's Gaiden Mastar who will also fall. Canadian getting the double kill. Pulls out the pistol and finishes him off. Now he's taking control of the top floor right above the bomb site. Retro has Diffuser. He's over inside of the strip club as well as Young. And now Necrox is just... Waiting away, waiting away, holding down from outside of construction. It's looking pretty good for a Continuum. Having got all the critical points there, they took control of the top floor, they got two kills up there, they took control of the strip club, they got Blackbeard in position. Now it's on them to make this plant. Retro's got to get in there, make the plant without getting countered by anything. They do have smoke with Boonsy. That is going to be the biggest counter to him right now. If they could take him out, this is going to be very easy for them to yeah, make. Yeah, I don't know if, we, if everyone noticed, but if we were looking at Retro there, he actually opened up some of the pool table uh, siding. So you yeah. can actually see through the pool table down through the stairs instead of them coming around. You're able to get that upper hand on them. But taking a look, we've got Shate over by the B bomb site inside of the middle of bar. And right now, that is the best shot the defensive has to prevent a plant inside of the pool table. Capito, though, trying to stop them from getting over close to being able to counter it. Vapo, though, doing some damage. Yeah, Vapo coming up from the basement stairs, able to get Necrox, but from above, he's going to be swamped right there. He knows Canadian is there, going to land a couple shots. Shot to able to get the shots on the retro. It's now a three on two. Young is last one inside a pool. You're going to have Canadian drop. He's going to have to get that diffuser planted, but Canadian's able to get the trade on the shot to as Vapo picks him off. It is now all up to Young. Young versus Vapo and Boonsi. He's got to hold this, get this win, unless Sisu's going to take this first map. It's right now match point here. Vapo's going to move on up the stairs. Young's going to be covered by the pool table. Vapo, you got 10 seconds left to go. Gas grenades going to prevent that plant. Young didn't have to get out of that location. And Bootsy is there to pick up the kill. It is Sisu winning map number one here on Clubhouse. We are going to head on to Oregon real here, real soon here. And that is what I was saying about Smoke being the counter right there. Great. Stopping that plant. I knew that was a bad position for Blackbeard mm. to be in. He is not the fastest planter. Uh, in, in terms of dealing with his movement and stuff. He's not going to be able to take off a shield anytime yep. like soon. So that is that is a hard position to be in. I really thought they had that round, but them getting taken down as they were going for that plant there really, really cost them. They, I think they needed to work a little harder to take out smoke. Yeah, and I, I think exactly what we saw there. Uh, uh, at first, it was Continuum looking like they were going to take it. I mean, it was 2-1. Continuum was in a good spot. And uh, I, I tell you, it was, it was difficult to see that 
Continuum didn't put up a better fight towards those final rounds. But regardless, I mean, they always came down to a one-on-one, -on -one, a two-on-one. -on -one. It was by no means a blowout. Yeah, and, and Clubhouse is a map Continuum have played really well on. Mm -hmm. I think we're going into a map that favors Zisu a little bit more, especially just all the European teams. So this is really going to be a little bit of an uphill battle for Continuum. It is. As they just did not have the 5-6-6-5 uh, the kind of thing we were expecting on Clubhouse there. Just losing of too many few rounds. I think uh, Zizu played some interesting styles in terms of older strats, actually, that we used to see, like the kitchen attacks and things yeah, like the, that. Yeah, the kitchen drop hatch, we almost never saw get opened up. It was always pr foreseen as, okay, this is too... Uh, too risky. You've always yeah. got a C4 underneath, but you can tell, especially with Kedem Mastaro opening up that drop hatch, that he knew exactly where to be without being killed by the C4. Yeah. Canadian trying to counter it just did not work out, but, you know, ultimately, them playing the way they did, playing a little bit differently, worked. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... And there we saw you. the peak from Necrox able to land the shots onto Wilkie. I mean, these, these highlights here are just highlighting some of the best kills that we've seen here on this map this season. I think everyone, at least kill-wise, showed a lot of power, like a lot of good plays. Some some rounds, some teams didn't do as well, but mm -hmm. definitely playing it really good. Yeah, and this is the 4-2 swap. I mean, right there, Canadian pushes on in and was able to finish off Apo. This was this, really... This is the shot. Cool. MPK was looking for the peak, but Boonsie was able to get there. And you saw how perfect the crosshairs were lined up from NVK. Oh, yeah. They were perfect. Boonsie, though, but however, was looking for it. If there's one operator you want to line up perfectly against and you don't want to go against, it's going to be Blackbeard. Yeah, and you saw with the daylight out there, it was a little bit, little bit harder for him to tell whose face it was he was taking yep. that peek at. Yeah, and there goes the nade, and that's what forced Young to push on out, but eventually he did get picked back up. I really liked that move, though, the idea of hiding behind that, uh, below that trap door, but he needs to work on being able to shotgun that out faster mm -hmm. to make that work. Agreed. He it took two shotguns, and then he stayed on the shotgun to try to get, get Young in that, that location. There's the C4. Now, taking a second look at it right there, we saw that a corner of it was on the reinforced wall, which is why it might not have done as much damage as he wanted it to. Yeah, it's definitely a hard thing to throw and get just right. I mean, Canadian's really great at that, but Vapo here just trapped in this corner. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the push here, and Young was able to get one, was able to get two. And NVK, though, just playing peekaboo here with Katie Mistaro, and Katie was just able to take that down. Now this I, is Canadian getting the double kill. He pushes on him, was able to finish off Wilkie, and then downs Keita Mastaro and finishes him off as well. I really thought Keita Mastaro could have been able to pull that off. Rook is a hard man to take down with like half a clip left. Agreed, agreed. And just, that was some great shots there. Pulled it off, took Rook down. Here is the nail in the coffin. Yeah, that was, that was so unfortunate. I really thought they had that round, and that would have obviously stopped them from losing that map, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and so with that, it will be Sisu taking map number one there on Clubhouse. We're going to get underway in Oregon in just a moment, but I, I tell you, I'm looking for just as much enthusiasm from these teams for Oregon as we have seen here on Clubhouse. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping Continuum are just going to like really bring the hype here because Oregon is not a map that NA have traditionally mm -hmm. been able to do nearly as well on or practiced as much as EU have. Yep. So, but the upside of that is that means a lot more exposure on those strats. That so, means a lot more for the NA teams to see how Oregon is Agreed. Played. And one of the things that I want to call it about Oregon that has been a big difference that we've seen over the over the summation of the previous seasons as well as this has been the the hold from okay let's hold on to basement hold on to bottom keep everyone in the basement we don't want to have lurkers to now you see three four lurkers up top holding on to kitchen holding on to the meeting hall yeah. and you see castle making a great appearance here on on Oregon yeah so the, the fact that the meta has shifted so much is something that I think a lot of teams still need to grasp. I think a lot of these teams have grasped that, and they know how to how to advance against it. It's just a matter of, are, are they going to be able to do it? Yeah. So, guys, let's take a look at the bomb sites here for Oregon. We're going to show you those well-known bomb sites, the ones that might be chosen, the ones that might not be chosen, as we get underway here on Oregon between round or between Sisu and Continuum. This is map number two, Sisu's choice. And here we are. We are going to swap sides. We've got Sisu now starting on the attack side and Continuum starting on the defense. We are going to see the laundry room and supply room being chosen right at the start. So the question is, are they going to play it the same way EU does? The same kind of strats that they do defending this? Or is the EU going to push like differently? Something we've seen a lot more often is an aggressive push from the tower side mm -hmm. paying off for some of these teams as opposed to playing that lobby that we so traditionally try to defend against. They, they are bringing in Blackbeard, so we could see them push up down those stairs with that Blackbeard. 
They are bringing a th uh, Thatcher, so they will be able to quickly get open that hatch, regardless if there was a mute, which there is. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say which side they're going to push from, but I do think it's looking like they could be going for that typical lobby push. Yeah, and I mean, what we're seeing here, we're actually going to see Canadian staying up top. He's opened up some of that attic. He's going to open up this window, possibly get a peek out, or at least make it make it look like he might get a peek. But uh, I, I see what we're gonna what we're gonna see here is basically Canadian just dominating the top, trying to cause a lot of havoc. This is a, that's his escape route. Should he need to get out of the meeting hall? Yeah, he's gonna use that mobility as much to his advantage as he possibly can because that meeting hall is something that of a bit of surprise that that catches a lot of teams off guard. Mm -hmm. Having the mobility up and down and over it with a three-speed operator like that can really pay off. Yep. And so here we are. We're gonna start underway with the attack side. Wilkie's gonna be on top of that dining hall roof by the small white tower. He's gonna be pushing on into the into the bedroom here with Boonsy by his side. They've already droned it out, ready to get going. And we're going to have to see here what is, what's going to go on with the attackers. It looks like they want to start from a top-down push. And we're going to see Wilkie leading that forefront. Right, I like this idea of uh, trying to take control of this top floor rather than just pushing into the lobby and worrying about people coming down from uh, above. But the, all this droning isn't necessarily going to do much if they can't do anything when they catch Canadian out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we see Vapo already moving into the garage. He's holding on to that kitchen entrance hallway there and also taking a look onto the meeting hall entrance. But taking a look at the defense side, they're all downstairs except for Canadian. NVK's on those back stairs by the red tower, and he's looking to see if someone's going to push from behind. Now, he, he's going to be the flanker. Hands down, if they start, if the attackers start making a push towards the front, NVK will be that flanker. And it's just a matter of is the defense or is the attack side ready for it? Yeah, I mean, he's he's trying to keep control of that tower to make sure that they don't push from that side. But it looks like they wanted this lobby side. They just did it from the top down. Yep, and we have Young playing the mute jam switch with the Thatcher here. So Thatcher only has three EMPs. Mute has four jammers. So with the delay from the time that an EMP goes off before you can actually uh, blow the blow the thermite charge, you could potentially not even need uh, anything else other than four jammers to get to stop that wall from getting opened up. Yeah, it's, if you can pull it off, it's great. If if the timing's off, then then you lose it and a lot of times wasted either way. But I like the way Canadians playing back and forth in this top floor, using that shots from across tower all the way over to the, the dorm L to try and stop them or slow them down at least. And it did help slow them down, but they are all downstairs now. So Canadian's going to have to make a move and get a little bit closer. Or he's going to be stuck in a position where he can't help his team. You can see all of the attackers putting a lot of attention there on the front way. You've got Blackbeard, who is Boonsy, moving on down the main stairwell. You still have Kadem Starro trying to open up that drop hatch. And right now, there are 30 seconds left to go. Shakta is going to get down by Canadian, peeking around from the top of Attic. And you're going to have Canadian looking down below. He spotted Vapo. Vapo just narrowly escaped with his life. Canadian's able to get that shot, though. And with that, it's now a five on four. 20 seconds left to go. Boonsy is going to get finished down to the bottom of the stairs. He will be traded off. You're going to see Vapo pick up a double kill. Kadem Starro was able to get NVK. It is now a three on two. Retro and Canadian are the last two alive. Canadian's upstairs inside of the attic. He's going to be pushing on down. Retro's going to be inside of the bar, or inside of the basement downstairs. And he was able to pick off the shots on the Vapo. Diffuser has not been planted. They killed the Diffuse planter. Two seconds left to go. Wilkie cannot get it down. And it will be the defenders winning round one here on Oregon. Getting that Blackbeard down definitely cost them. Like, that, that's an important part of that push, important part of holding it, trying to make that happen. Once he started that plant, though, with Wilkie helping him on, on defense, I thought they were going to be able to get that down. Yep. The timing there, getting him just before that, that diffuse could get planted, mm -hmm. saved them the round there. Because the, there was so little time left, they just couldn't make it work. That was an interesting push. The defenders, though, just holding it well. The timing on Canadian was just right. It would have been nice if he would have been able to take it out Vapo through that ladder hole there, but still putting a, putting a bit of a scare in him and getting Shata upstairs. Uh, yeah, I mean, once you, once you got Shata upstairs, stairs, you already did your job for the simple fact that, hey, they now have to pay attention to you. It's not a matter of, okay, we have control of lobby, we need to get this drop hatch open, we need to go down the stairs. It's now, we need to do all that stuff, plus watch our back, because our flank watcher just died. Yeah. It's definitely something where uh, they left a little bit of people upstairs, and then just left them in a position where they weren't ready for Canadian just yet. Yep. 100% here. So, with that, we are going to move on to Sisu playing on defense this time, and we're going to see a little bit of a different operator selection choice than we saw on Clubhouse. We are going to have Rook making an appearance, but we still are going to see the, the Mute, the Smoke, and the Yig. Yeah. Which, again, has not been a, a big changeup. It's something that a lot of teams utilize. They will almost always have the Smoke and the Jaeger. Jaeger's almost a 100% pick on this because nades are everywhere. Yeah, and this is something I, I've liked from a lot of teams where they will hide the Jaeger up there, take control of that tower, and then just 
wait for someone to try and make a move in, laying down on that top part there, and just catching them off guard when they try and come through that window. Yep, and so what you see Retro droning out Red Tower, but he can't get his cam up to the very top where we see Vapo. Canadian's very cautious of that. He knows the window's open. He's going to open up the top window, and he's going to wait for his team to try to pinch Vapo. They have to make the assumption that someone's up there, especially when you already have one window open. Yeah, the windows on that tower are definitely a big part of how you use that, and Canadian's going to have to be careful there because he opened up that window. Now it could be used against him if he's not watching it. I really like the connection there that Wilkie has. He's staying inside of Armory, opened up the window there towards Red Tower, and he was actually watching to see if NVK was actually going to overexpose himself. Yeah, it's definitely a dangerous position to be in, both of them playing a little bit of cat and mouse there. Mm -hmm. Maybe knowing each other there and just waiting for one of them to make that mistake. Yeah, and here's the opposite of what we saw before. We're going to see a back, a back hallway push or a back tower push. And Young's already inside of the meeting hall, going to watch for the flank until the push ends up coming. And you already see one drop hatch being opened up above the box and downstairs inside of Laundry. Retro's able to get that open. He has one charge left to go. He was able to peek on down, doesn't see anybody, and you're going to see Canadian finishing, droning out the rest of that. Yeah, you usually don't see the hatch being the priority. Usually the lobby is the priority. The question is, where is he going to use that second charge? Is he going to go for that lobby, or is I he going to try to go, go outside. for the construction push? Yeah. I feel like he's going to go outside for the construction there push. You already see Young rotating around. That drop hatch was able to get opened up to allow, in case there was a bandit, able to get a mute. Now they were able to open up that wall, and that clears it all out. So you see Young pushing on in. Door's already been closed off. I wouldn't open this up just yet. I'd wait until you get your Thermite down. Yeah, he's definitely going to have an, an awkward push there if he can't take control of that area because Thermite is vital. Obviously, he needs to get that, the, one of those walls open mm -hmm. to help his team push there. Blackbeard, though, being a good operator to help him with that. Oh, NVK able to get the shots onto Boonzi as he overpeaks himself coming from the A bombsite hallway. Kanan Mistaro is still inside of the bombsite. He's going to have to get on his game if he wants to get the win here. There's 40 seconds left to go. You're going to see Young picking up the kill onto Shate. It is now a three on five. 35 seconds left to go. Canadian's going to go with those incendiary arrows. Charge out the, the trade-off and the, the connection window. Vapo's able to get Young, though. NVK comes around the corner, gets Kaden Mistaro, and Vapo will get a triple kill. He gets NVK. He gets Canadian. It is now a two on two, and he will not get his fourth kill. It's going to be Retro finishing him off with the knife. Wilkie trying to come in for the flank. Just cannot land the shots. Retro's there to get the last two kills of the round. It's going to be Continuum taking round two. 2-0 two at the moment. Uh, I mean, that was an amazing push by Continuum. Like, I, I haven't seen that strat very often yet. It worked really, really well. But I am going to give a lot of points to Vapo for really pulling it off there. Just doing the best he possibly can for his team I to mean, bring it back and just could not agreed. Like, kill them all himself. Vapo had a 3k going. I thought he I thought he downed Retro when he pulled out the pistol and tried to go for the final kill onto him, but you've already killed two people with your pistol. You didn't reload just yet, yeah. so you have three, four bullets to potentially get a headshot on him when you're in that rushed of a situation. Fabulous try, fabulous attempt, but it just didn't land out for him. No, it was definitely definitely a great strat by Continuum. I don't know if they'll be able to use it successfully again, but we are going to go upstairs instead. Yep. So here we are. We are going to the round number three here between Sisu and Continuum on map number two. So this Dorms is definitely going to have to be played quite a bit differently. We've seen a lot of basement. We've seen some actual good different strategies, as well as some of the classic one mi mixed in. Now, the classic one for this attack on this bomb spot is to attack through that A window. We have seen a lot more teams experimenting with B window attacks that are sometimes working on that bedroom. But it does vary. We've also seen teams starting to push that master bedroom, trying to come in through that wall and push into the bunk bed area. So a lot of variety on this attack. The question is, which one is Continuum uh, going to have to defend against here? Because EU plays the way they want to play. Mm -hmm. What I really like about this bomb hole that they're doing is it's totally different than what we've seen before. They're holding on to kitchen, holding on to dining, holding on to meeting hall. Yeah, that, that spread though could backfire on them if they're not able to support each other and make those trades if they need to. Yep, and so we're going to see, looks like Shata starting outside by the main entrance, going to throw a couple bullets and then move on up to the roof. So those, those Thatchers are going to come in handy if he can try and clear some kind of defenses, maybe clear some Jaegers or something like that from this particular area. Right it looks like what he might be doing is trying to take out those ADSs or any other kind of electronic traps on that window. So they are going to want to push that window with Blackbeard. But the thing about that is you've got to be careful of that small tower right there getting shot in the back. So they're going to have to think about that. Yeah, and you've got Vapo holding on top of this meeting hall roof right outside the red tower. Going to open up the window all the way. And potentially just sit here and watch for a moment as you do have Necrox inside of the hallway to the right window. It's a nice angle, but you do have to wait for someone to expose themselves as you can't see a huge chunk of the room. 
And I, I anticipate Boonsi staying around this area for the whole time. He's got control of the window. He's going to finish droning out to the left behind the mattress, see if someone might be there. Then he's probably going to take a look behind the bomb site to his right, but this is so he's going to see Retro. Pretty common hole there, so I'm not surprised, but Retro just didn't seem prepared for that drone. See, I, I like where we just saw, I believe that was, or I believe that was Wilkie outside of the window at the bottom of those back stairs. He's making sure that no one's going to be underneath with a C4 in hand ready to blow the floor up from below. That's smart. There's a lot of that that happens, but Retro getting caught off guard. It's a nice angle. Retro was down and finally finished off by Boonsy, who again is on top of the tower out here. Necroc's able to get Shate for the trade. Canadian though laying down, that's going to hurt. That does make it essentially a three on three at the moment. Yep, and here we have Young going to get the shot on the Wilkie, and we have Necrox being traded off by Poonsi. Young able to get a second kill here, but will then be finished off by Kaden Mistaro. It's now a two on two. Poonsi and Kaden Mistaro going up against Canadian and NVK. We're going to have, looks like Kaden Mistaro rushes on in. NVK's to get the trading and kill. Poonsi's going to have to push on in. 45 seconds, time to go, but we have NVK still outside. This is going to be hard for Blackbeard. He's got to get to that diffuser, and they know it. And Canadian, or I'm sorry, NVK looking in through the attic and able to get the shots here onto Boonsie. It's going to be Continuum winning 3-0 at the moment. You know what? I'm, I'm eating my hat at the moment. I, I really said earlier that this was an EU favored map, but we're seeing some really strong plays mm -hmm. on at least attack from Continuum as well as defense on that particular bomb spot. It's 3-0. It is. That is not how I expected this to go at all. I mean, definitely a, a big flip-flop of what we've seen over the play days here from both of these teams. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, hey, if they can hold this lead and take uh, Sisu on one of their maps, yep. that could be a strong blow and bring Hereford into a really uh, interesting place. Yeah, and taking a look over on the Sisu scoreboard here, looks at those Shatta and Wilkie might need to step it up just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we have we have Vapo doing a lot of work. However, he did get the 3K in the one round. Yeah. We're only three rounds in, so there's still room to come back, still room to, to get your groove on. Yeah, we saw a lot of good plays from Wilkie in the clubhouse. He's just not having the good opportunities and the good plays that he had there. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely falling a lot on Vapo, but it's good. You know, Vapo's one of, one of these teammates that's just really shown a lot of good plays this season. So I expect a lot. Yeah, and a lot of the players here, almost every player has some very great potential to just carry their team, should they need to. But again, it comes down to how well does your team work together. It's a five-on-five -five game, not a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this plays out because we saw so many trades when the attack went down in here last time. You know, an attacker mm -hmm. get a kill, then a defender get a kill. Back and forth. The question is, is that same thing going to happen in this upstairs here? Because I imagine Continuum is going to attack it a little bit differently. We've seen them use some slightly off-kilter strats from how, how teams typically attack things, and that is something we've seen a lot over the play days from Continuum. Yeah, and I think one of the things to note here is that Sisu was not forced to go up top. They tried going into the basement, they failed in that attempt, they rethought, they said, okay, let's go with a different strat, try to hold up top, and this is their attempt at the moment. That's an interesting play from continue, uh, from NVK as well, opening that up and coming in from this way. He just wants to take control of the west side of the map here, make sure that he knows what's coming, because those stairs over there are, are an important part of this attack. Yeah, and you've got Canadian as well as Young pushing on in. Canadian made his way into the kitchen, and Young's inside of the shower room. I like what he's doing there with that angle there, trying to see down that hallway and take advantage of the fact that he's got that shield, because he's mostly just going to be exposed on that shield area through the hole. Yep. Necrox also pushing in from the garage. Looks as like they finally cleared out almost all of the main floor. However, some bullets from above Necrox will force him to get out of the garage. I liked all the crossfire and long angles they were using. That's one of the, the attacker advantages, is being able to fight at longer ranges than most of the defenders. Mm -hmm. And they're really using that to their advantage, taking as much map control as possible from long angles. Yep, and Retro's going to be outside between the bomb site and White Tower, the smaller tower on this building. Usually this is where you see Blackbeard playing, but I think Retro's hoping he could pull off those shots if he needs to. Yeah, now Vapo has managed to secure himself up here in the watchtower. Young's able to get the first shot, though, onto Shate, and that's going to finish him off here as he comes up the back stairs. Wilkie almost peeks a little too far there. He is waiting for something, but Young's waiting for him even more so. He knows that hole's there for a reason. Ooh, and the bullets go. He land, but won't finish him off. You're going to have the nade from NVK oh. underneath, able to get Boonsie. 
That's one of my favorite attacks is that kitchen right there. Glory's below. placement. Wilkie's going to find the shots, come on down and try to get NVK, but he will fall to the bullet. Vapo is able to get the trade off though. Come oh. from underneath and the pre-fire, no ADS from the ceiling will get the shots on the retro. Canadian's able to get Kitty Mistaro though and now it is a three on one. Vapo's last one alive. He's picked up two kills. He comes around the doorway and Necrox is there to finish him off and make it 4-0 match point here for Continuum. Seeing another round where Vapo's trying to save the day makes some great plays, but he's got to find way too many. I think the rest of his teammates really need to whittle them down before he has to make those plays because he just he can't do it all himself. You can get one, you can get two, you can get three, you could possibly even get four, but to secure the ace in a pro league final yeah. is unheard of. I, I really liked a lot of the vertical play on that on that particular round. You saw kills coming up from the kitchen against the, de the defenders, and then the defenders using kills up to the floor on the attackers, mm -hmm. knowing where that plant spot was going to be, knowing they were going to push that window. But at 4-0 to zero here, I really think Zisu they're going to have to play this safe, play the strats. They know the wor they work the best. And it's, it's going to be hard. They're having to attack a hard bomb spot here. Yeah, and if we take a look at Canadian, or I'm sorry, Continuum, <laughs> looking at Canadian's name there, um, you see that for the most part, the kills are spread out even. You can expect to see good teamwork, good cooperation between them. And that's exactly what we are seeing here. I mean, it, for in order for you to secure the watchtower, the, the, the white tower, secure dining, secure kitchen, they did it in a three-man job, and it was very well done. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of good teamwork and coordination is what it really comes down to from Continuum. They know how to work with each other. They know how to watch each other's back and make those trades if they get killed. So we are going to get underway here in the attack phase. Canadian's going to open up the window. Yeah, we saw him use it last time from Tower, and it looks like he could be setting it up to potentially do the same thing as well mm -hmm. as he rotates over to Tower. They might be expecting it this time, but it does look like he's going to go down instead of up, surprisingly. And so Shate is just pre-firing the door with a couple bullets, not opening it up all the way until just now. Well, it looks like they're doing basically what they did last time, which if that's the case, it didn't work. So Agreed. hopefully that's not what they're doing. I think the biggest thing that didn't work for him was the fact that you had Young playing Mute was just able to pull it, put jammer after jammer after jammer down, and they couldn't open up the drop hatch. They spent two and a half minutes before they finally started making a push down. Yeah, and you see that they figured out opening up as much of that classroom wall as possible is the way to make sure that, that that's going to happen. I mean, yep. if you can't clear out that, uh, that jammer, like, what are you going to do? You can't push those stairs. And I really was hoping to see maybe a different push from the tower side, mm -hmm. particularly from Zisu here, when this just the stairs push just did not work. Yep. And so we do have Canadians still up top. Boonsy, I believe he heard the window getting hit open, but doesn't actually see it. So now he's just going to pre-fire a little bit. But Boonsy's going to stay here on top of the main stairs and in the lobby. He's got to watch his back, though. With that being opened up, it's going to be very... Oh! oh and the bullet there from Canadian wow. above in the watchtower will finish off Boonsy. And that is Blackbeard not even able to make it down the main stairwell. That is really a, a bad start for that is, Zisu. That is the, the, the kill they needed. That's almost the nail in the coffin here. We have a minute and a half left to go with a five on four. They're really going to have to get some good kills on the defenders or this push is like already dead in the water. And so NVK now playing with Canadians. They're, they're working together here. Um, we have Shate, though, who's inside of the armory. That's top floor. Very careful with that window, though. Canadian's going to come back down from the red tower. Goes against Vapo. Vapo's able to get the kill, but he can't get the, he can't get the finishing kill. Oh, the it trade. was Wilkie finishing off Canadian. NVK, though, able to get a double kill on Vapo and Wilkie. He's going to rotate off of Attic, come back downstairs, and now they are looking for him. Shate's coming up top to the Attic to try to get NVK, but he's already rotated away from the site. 50 seconds left to go. A two on four. It is not looking good here for Sisu. They do not have their clutch operator, uh, Vapo, here to try and save the day, so it is not looking Ooh, good at all. And the shotgun from Necrox is able to get one, able to get two. It is Katie Mistaro and Shate fall into it, and it will be Continuum taking map number two. That was an amazing set of rounds. 5-0 on the EU favored map. I, could, I, I wouldn't put any money on that I, I, I would. I would never have thought it, but I will say, seeing as how Continuum has 10 0 a team, they are the first team to 10 0 another team here in the Pro League. The previous second place team, too. The previous second place team. I, if there was going to be a team to do it, it would be this team. Yeah, and it, I, it's funny because I really didn't see the strength of play I expected from Continuum on Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. But Oregon, they just came out swinging. They did. And I, I think seeing the strats that they used, I can understand why this 5-0 worked. They really just played against it, and I did not see that adaptation from Zisu that I expected from them. The uh, last round proved it. I, I think so. A little bit of what I saw was the, the simple fact that it seemed like, aside from trying to uh, uh, from the defenses, uh, uh, pulling open the wall and get, make, utilizing the mute. Aside from that, it seemed like Sisu was kind of playing a season one, almost a 
early season two meta yeah. where they weren't pushing for anything other than that main lobby. I mean, you saw Continuum right off the start, push from the back, go get, get construction entrance open, and they got the win. Yeah, I think having a tunnel push prepared, I mean, yeah, the construction tunnel or a tower push, mm -hmm. either one of those, having that in the pocket could have saved them. Agreed. But, you know, it, it's it's something they're going to have to work on. I'm assuming they're going to continue to play this game mm -hmm. and, and work on it. And if they play Oregon again, they're going to be a little more prepared for that. But it is now one to one, so we're gonna have to go to Hereford actually. We are Hereford. So that should be interesting. Some great plays back back forth across and that kill from Canadian. I mean, it was the perfect setup. He baited him with the lower window, got up to the top, and was able. I mean, if you took a quick look at it, you saw that the top of Blackbeard yeah. Shield just covered it. It was that was brilliantly played. That was some good mind game play mm -hmm. by Canadian, and that's what a roamer does, right? Roamers yep. are the mind game. They are. They so if there's someone to play a single mind game, it's gonna be most like a Jaeger, possibly a Bandit, like we saw Canadian and NVK both doing. Yeah. And the fact that they've done so well together, Canadian got downed and injured, but NVK was right there to cover and, and get the trade off. So the fact that you've got two roamers working so well together is one of the things that just allowed them to dominate that map. Yeah, and I think trades alone were what kept them, even if they got in firefights and lost. People, mm -hmm. they were almost always able to trade it yep. and just stay in the advantage. So, Agreed. like, they just pushed and pushed and pushed. And I just really liked a lot of the the vertical play that both teams mm -hmm. used. Although, obviously, Continuum used it a little bit better yeah. and played that tower a little bit stronger. I, I, so, one of the things that I didn't see that I was expecting to was a castle. I yeah. mean, we saw Continuum try to hold the, the meeting hall, which they did successfully every time. Yeah. But they did it without a castle. And a lot of times, it takes teams to utilize a castle in order to hold it successfully. And I, and I think uh, Castle is really good for holding off a tunnel or uh, a push from the tower, mm -hmm. and that's what happened, and they weren't prepared for it. Agreed. So I think, again, that, it's the lack of adaptation and the lack of preparation in terms of knowing what Continuum's going to do that really cost them ultimately mm -hmm. on a map that they should have been a little more prepared for. But it should be interesting going into Hereford because this is one like uh, NA teams have been pretty good on, but we haven't seen a good battle on Hereford here. I, I think Hereford's been played maybe once or twice yeah. this season for NAPC. And looking over the play days, it's something that Zisu really wanted to play and just rarely ever got to. They, mm -hmm. they, it was almost always like the third map, the one that didn't get played. Yep. And so you could tell Zisu is actually looking forward to playing this. The question is, uh, is Continuum looking forward to playing this? We've seen some pretty good uh, Hereford play from Continuum on the NA play days. However, they lost it to a lesser team at mm -hmm. one point. So this could go either way, but I did like the way they played it. So and so I am thinking this is gonna be very close. I think it is too. I, I feel like seeing, uh, taking Oregon into consideration here, seeing how well Canadian NVK were able to organize their lurking, organize their roaming and work together, I feel they're gonna utilize similar tactics on Hereford, yeah. be able to take control of second floor and first floor, possibly second and third floor, keep the keep the attackers at bay so that they aren't solely focused on the lockers, focused on the 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 tunnel or yeah. not, not tunnel, the the trench. I'm just really hoping to see some different strats from both teams for sure. Mm -hmm. So we are going to take a look here at the bomb sites for Hereford, which is the final map, the overtime map for the first matchup here between Continuum and Sisu. So let's take a look at those bomb sites. And here we have a Continuum starting on the attack side this time, and we're going to have Sisu starting on defense. Yeah, of course, they're going to be going down to that briefing room armory. Not a big surprise there. That is clearly the best bomb site on this map mm -hmm. by far, so you're really not going to want to play anywhere else. The question is, what are they going to do to stop them from getting in here? There's not a ton of options you can do to stop these walls from getting opened, and that is obviously key to getting here. One of the things we see being probably the biggest parts of making a push here is that no one pushes B. No one plants in B and I would like reason, to see something with I that. would love to see Continuum somehow find a way to plant B. If anyone's going to do it, I think it's going to be Continuum, but at the same time I've just seen some really aggressive pushes in from Continuum and even some aggressive defense and I don't know... Being a European team, they're not uh, as aggressive, so I'm curious to see if that plays off here mm -hmm. in terms of m making that work. But if they just go for the typical attack here, I think Zisu's going to be prepared for it. Yeah, we see Wilkie already rotating all the way up to the top floor. It might open up one of the doors and throw out a camera, but we see the majority of the attackers starting out by the east parking lot. We see them, of course, bringing the Thatcher and the Thermite to be able to get those walls open. What bringing a good the typical... placement there by the cam. Yeah, the cam. it's a nice place, hiding it from the attackers. 
I mean, you saw how well well tucked it was in those trees. Gave him good line of sight from the trench. I mean, to, to me, that, that, that camera is not going to be spotted. But again, when teams look back at it, it won't be used again. Yeah. And, that, and of course, it's the thing. If you place outside cams in this, you need to be able to do something with them. Just to know they're outside doesn't do you a whole lot if you don't have a way to peek it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, because they're going to be pretty much where you expect it to the, for the most part. So, unlike something like Canal, where you're going to take advantage of a lot of repellers, yeah, we just heard the delivery wall getting opened up. Canadian's now going to move on down into Trench along with Young and Retro. They're Flashbang's going to go out, get rid of this, the uh, ADSs. They're making this push on A very quickly. The question is, are they going to have enough control over the ladder room to make sure they don't get shot from the cross or to be able to at least clear out enough of that barbed wire? You see so much of it in that briefing room there. Yeah, well, with Retro droning out all of A, they know it's all clear. However, right now we only see two defenders downstairs. Vapo's made his way to the first floor, and Canadian's holding on to that very tight angle, looking for it. I think they're definitely going for potentially a retake kind of strategy, but at the same time, like, if the plant gets down and they're ready to defend it, it might not do any good. Agreed, and so Boonty's on the back stairs here. Canadian's holding on to that angle, making sure that if he comes on down, he'll pay the price for it. Vapo's still inside. It looks like the garage hallway, first floor. Young's cam gets taken out as he tries to make a push on in, and NVK's holding down to that main hallway right now. I think NVK might have to come around and help uh, Young there open up some of that barbed wire as he's going to have a lot to deal with, potentially uh, Retro being able to do some as well, but Canadian's going to bring the grenades. Actually, oh, almost killed Retro's drone. There we have Wilkie looking on out, peeking, and we'll get the first kill on the Retro. That's going to be the Thermite down. I don't know if they wanted to open up the large locker wall, but that's not happening anymore. Yeah, getting delivery open is the, really the most important part, but it does hurt to lose Thermite in a situation where he hasn't used all his utility. Ooh, and we're going to have, looks like, Canadian falling to some bullets. Katie Mastaro still by the ammo crates. He'll finally finish off Canadian in a five on two now as he also is able to pick up the kill into Young. With that, it's now to NVK and Necrox. And there is one defender who's been injured. That's Vapo. He'll be finished off by Necrox. With 35 seconds left to go, it is now a four on two. Shat is inside of the ladder room looking across, making sure that if NVK is going to push on in, he'll pay some bullets for it. Necrox able to get a second kill on the Boonty. And now NVK is going to make his push in, but will be denied as Shattuck gets the headshot onto him. Necrox made his way into side a locker. He's been called out. Kata Mistaro, though, is going to aim low and will be there for the headshot onto Necrox. And that is going to be the Kata Mistaro show with Chateau Follow it up with some kills. I liked a lot of the angles Kata Mistaro was using. That's not an angle you expect people to be at. Agreed. Laying down, I mean... Uh, a lot of times been, they're crouch. Yeah, something about that, that green pellets has been used before to watch the stairs, but not usually to watch that particular angle. Mm -hmm. And I think they didn't expect it. He really just guarded A all by himself from that angle. So it definitely paid off there. I think it was a really good hold there. I mean, you saw how basically Continuum didn't clear out, didn't care about the lurkers upstairs. Yeah. They paid most attention downstairs into the, into the trench, into the A bomb site. And I think it bit him in the butt a bit. Yeah. I mean, Wilkie only got the one kill onto Thermite from there. Mm -hmm. But if that really messed up their whole strategy and blowing open that locker's wall, then, it, yeah, it cost them a lot. Yep. But we'll see here how they're going to defend it differently. Interesting that we're seeing the Montaigne brought out. Is that going to be for an A plant where they're trying to push in from there? But it, it actually isn't the basement being played. So that is going to be interesting. I'm not sure if they are prepared for that. If they brought that Montaigne to go for a plant downstairs, they're really going to be thrown off by Continuum not starting down there. Yeah, I mean, the way that the meta is in the game right now is if you choose a Montaigne, you have one strat for it. Yeah. And if you're expecting it to be a different bomb site than it actually is, he's you're going to have to make something up on the fly. Yeah, he's now, not the most flexible attacker. He's not. He's not. Not the most agile or flexible. Yeah, this will be definitely an interesting strat. This is not something we see teams wanting to do. This could be the secondary bomb site, and they're just trying to throw off Zisu. In this case, it may actually work here. I, obviously, they would have drone to know where they're at now, but that's a little too late to choose a different operator and plan something drastically different. I mean, maybe Montaigne has a secondary strat for this, but it looks like he's just kind of pushing up to try and help his team. Yeah, now you see Kenneth Bistaro very cautious of that 2-3 platform out there by the south side of the map. I believe that was NVK who's right on possibly able to look out there. Yeah. Someone we haven't seen yet that it surprises me because we didn't see him even on Clubhouse, which was actually unusual, is Castle. Canadian playing Castle on this map of all maps. Like, we would have expected him on the last two. Mm -hmm. Not Like, seeing him on this one is definitely interesting. They've got some plans in mind here. Canadian doesn't just pick an operator for no reason. Necrox, though, taking some punishment. Yeah, and I think this is to help control the, the flow of that second floor should they take control of it. And here, Canadian reaches on out. Had the window already hit twice, all he had to do was hit it once. Did not get a kill, though. Vapo's right underneath the window. Chateau's going to move on in. Look how avoid some they bullets. are, though. That definitely worked, even if it didn't kill him. 
Now Vapo will finally be finished off. Oh, he gets a triple kill on the Vapo Shante and will pick up the final one on the Kedemistaro before getting finished off by Boonsi. With that kill, Canadian just turned the odds directly into Continuum's favor. It is now a four on two. Wilkie and Boonsi, last two alive. Half the round left to go. Now they knew Canadian was there, but they did not expect that to happen. Oh, Young though on his phone. Yeah. Young playing that Pokemon Go. We're going to have Wilkie finishing him off, paying the price for it. However, he is drastically hurt, down to about three or four health. He's managed to make his way in, doesn't have the diffuser, though. boonsie has got that diffuser. And Wilkie actually commits suicide as he misfires the incendiary arrow. Retro's right on the other side of the wall. Boonsie knows he's there, will reload, but doesn't have a head shield on at the moment. That was definitely embarrassing for Wilkie. I hope he's going to play a little bit better or a little more carefully with that fire in the future. So with this, they now know, all the defenders know, Boonsie's inside a garage. I wouldn't be surprised. You've got, I believe that is NVK downstairs, waiting to see if he might drop and come around for the flank. I rarely see a Blackbeard solo plant ever work. Like, this is going to be very difficult for Boonsie to pull off a plant here unless he can get at least one kill and get the other guy far enough away to do something. Yep, and you, I, I totally understand why there's no shield at the moment, and that's because he's got to be agile. He's got to be fast. He's got to get the win here. 30 seconds left to go. Boonsie's going to push on into the B bomb site. NVK's there to hold on to the tight angle on that window. Retro's also right on the other side of the wall. Bootsy moves on in. His left side's going to be exposed. NVK is going to be there and gets the kill. It's now 1-1. Continue in Sisu on the overtime map here, deciding who's going to take home the point and move on to the grand finals. Some brilliant mind games from Continuum, playing totally differently than Zizu expected. Mm -hmm. Playing the upstairs bomb site. Canadian doing that crazy jump out movie, getting three. Just no one expected any of that, and that's what I love about Continuum. They've been a team that has brought just totally unexpected strats. We saw them on Oregon. We've seen on Clubhouse sometimes as well. Just the way they play is like they've really thought about, like, okay, here's what people are doing. We're not going to do that. We're going to do something okay. better and different mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and brought that to a tie. They, they got some, uh, some slight mistakes in the first round, and hopefully they've learned from them. But we're now going to see how Zisu play the same bomb site. I, I want to say Canadians play jumping out, getting those three kills was, to me, one of the highlights here, one of the best highlights from this series at the moment. Yeah, definitely, along with Wilkie getting, catching himself with the fire within the same round. <laughs> definitely the most interesting round we've seen so far. 100%. All right, so we are getting underway here in the prep phase, and we're going to see Bombsite go onto the first floor. It looks like they want to be able to play in here, reinforcing some of that wall there. This is where we saw a Canadian actually, like, castling some of that just to be able to, to lock them out without having to, uh, like, guard that particular entrance. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen a team necessarily try and use it just yet, but they are reinforcing and trying to protect it anyways. A lot of vertical play being planned here. You see them opening a lot of holes in the floor, trying to set themselves up, opening those drop downs, opening the holes, just getting in positions where they can guard that top floor. As long as they don't lose it, they have a good, strong position to do something. Yeah, so NVK saw the wall reinforced, although he did see it get opened up a bit. So with that, NVK is going to move upstairs into the third floor and just push his way down. Yeah, they didn't didn't reinforce that. Not necessarily a lot of reason to, but I, I, I wonder if he just caught Vapo's head there when we looked. Might have, or it might have just been Retro's drone that spotted him. But nonetheless, Shatch is going to be on the other side of that wall getting blown open right above Garage. Sensor deployed. We are seeing Pulse being used here. Catching out Young, that could really backfire. He did see him drop. Shatton knows someone's coming on up here. Does he realize it's going to be a Blackbeard? That could cost him if he doesn't, but the shotgun's going to do some shotgun's damage Shotgun's going to be right there, and we'll get the kill on the Young. That's going to be Shatton finishing him off, but will be killed off. Looks as though... Oh, that was Wilkie getting onto Necrox. Right there, a five on three now with still two-thirds of the round. It's really looking good for Zisu. Yeah, losing an Ash and a Blackbeard right off the bat, leaving you with Thermite... Buck and Sledge, not the strongest attack force, not totally weak either. It's not like being left with just shields, but mm. this is definitely looking good for Zisu. The Shats is the only one even injured on this 5v3. Here we have still half the round to go. Canadian's going to push on in, tries to get Shats. Shats is going to pull out the heartbeat center, and he's too far away yep. to spot Canadian. Canadian drops unexpectedly. Oh. They down each other inside of the kitchen office, and right now Wilkie will finish off NVK. Vapo's going to move on downstairs. Doesn't realize Canadian to his left, though, pushes on in. Gets the kill onto Retro, and Bootsy's traded onto Canadian. We'll finish that off, and there's going to be the win here for Sisu. They definitely defended that, at least as well as Continuum did. Interesting to see like that bomb spot be the one that's well defended mm -hmm. of all bomb spots. But they are going to probably be able to go back down to the basement and do exactly uh, what they did before, as the uh, bomb spot downstairs is, is a brutal one to use. Continuum not doing anything too crazy, bringing... 
looks like the standard operators. The Montane coming out again, though, it looks like they're like, okay, you know, we, we know they did the upstairs last time. We didn't get to use the Montane the way we want to. They're going to pick downstairs this time. Take two. Yep, We're going to try this Let's Montane chat. Well, let's not lose this round with them this time. So we didn't get to see what they were going to do with them last time. I imagine it's for an A plant. I can't see them doing a whole lot else with it unless they've got some crazy idea for how to make a B plant. So we probably will see them in that A door trying to guard for a plant right near the door. See, I, I feel like... I was actually expecting it. Maybe this will still come about, but I feel like Continuum could kind of make a top floor hold on a defensive site here. Yeah. Now, it's different. It's odd. It's not been used ever in the Pro League to hold the top floor of Hereford, but I feel like there's some, some strats that could have been working for it. But we're down here on the basement, and we're, we're going to see a similar setup here that we've seen before. Yeah, it's always interesting to see which walls of these on B that they end up reinforcing, whether it's all of them or they leave themselves some kill holes, give themselves some angles, because B is primarily used as a site to help defend A, mm -hmm. rather than a site in and of itself. So here we are. We're going to have most of the attackers starting outside by the uh, the parking lot, and as well as the observation room here. And we've got just underway here in the attack phase. Looking for some angles there, trying to see if they can catch someone out, make sure no one's going to peek out there. That is going to slow them down a little bit, but being careful like that definitely makes a difference. They're worried about people being upstairs just like they played upstairs, right? Again, mm -hmm. they're trying to defend against what they did. So they're really going to be a, a little extra concerned. Although you do have Canadian playing that pulse, definitely going to try and spot them out if they try and make some moves on those top floors. You know, Sledge is an operator that's been used before, but we have we tend to see different op a different set of operators other than Sledge for attacking. Yeah, and, and we aren't seeing them with a Thatcher or anything like that to be able to help kind of counter that bandit down there if the bandit has put batteries on those walls. So they're really going to potentially go for some kind of different attack rather than necessarily opening up delivery if they can't, if they can't uh, take out those batteries or anything. Yeah, so you see Vapo and Canadian going back to back there in, outside of the, uh, the tub room or the bathroom. And we also hear the delivery wall getting finally opened up by Chateau over here by the trench. And we do see that Montaigne slowly making his way towards that door, just waiting for it to be droned out for him so he can have some idea what's going to be there. Interesting that they put a battery on that barbed wire there, trying to stop the drones from getting in. We don't see a lot of batteries on barbed wire in Pro, and it's nice to see a good use of it so that Bandit isn't just for reinforced walls. See, I like what we're going to see here from Kaden Mastaro. He's going to hold on to the door. It's going to be very similar to a clubhouse stockroom push, and it's... I feel it's going to work as long as they can make sure that their angle from the B-bomb site isn't going to be too detrimental. Yeah, and it, this is a case where they're going to need that C4. Canadian's going to have to be the guy to try and do something about this Montaigne. He's playing it Central late up here in the top. Looking to see if he can catch anyone trying to take that top-down control, but I don't know if he realizes they don't really care about it right now so much as they just want to take control of that A-door. Yeah, now with Canadian's heartbeat sensor, he spots someone on the first floor. Boonsie's managed to make his way here over here in the locker, holding on to the ladder room, which Young is very close to overexposing himself here. We do have Vapo getting finished off from above, and that's going to be NVK finally getting a kill up here. Playing it nice and well. Now these roamers are, are doing a good job taking control of that top site, but they're going to have to rotate down soon as the attacks are really starting to push into that A site. Montaigne's in place here. Gas grenades are going out. Smoke grenades are going out. You've got flashbang Canadian able to get shot. Gets a knife onto Kenny Mistaro. That's going to be the Montaigne falling for the kill. Wilkie's able to get Canadian coming in from the B bomb or A bomb site. It's going to be retro. And that's Boonsy falling. Necrox able to get onto Wilkie, and it will be Continuum right now winning this round. It's going to be 2-2 at the moment. Canadian again winning around by jumping out a window. That's exactly what you need to do if you want to take on this round. Yeah, and it's nice to see. That was a good counter to the Montaigne's right? You say, well, Montaigne's only vulnerable from behind. I know how to get behind him. Jump out a dang window. Yep. And it, it really cost them. I, I don't know if they're going to want to try that Montaigne strat for a third time if they get a chance to, but it is tied here, so it could go either way for this map. Yeah, and, and what Canadian did, he jumped outside of that bathroom window, which he was staying in the whole time. And what you need to be careful about is only half of that window has a platform underneath of it. That grate right above the doorway of the, the trench, you have to go to the right half of that window to jump out. You jump out the left half, you'll jump all the way down into trench and kill yourself. Yeah, you really got to be careful about that. Obviously, something you have to have thought about beforehand. You can't just do it and Agreed. hope for the best. That was not a spur of the moment jump. That was a well-timed, planned event from a pro league player. Well, Pulse is a good operator to do that because you got to know they're there. Agreed. So. We are going down to the basement again, and it looks like they may play some people upstairs again. You see Vapo up here getting ready. He might just be reinforcing some walls and placing some ADS downstairs. His he already did, mm -hmm. but is he going to be able to roam up here? We've seen a lot of great roam play from Vapo as Jaeger, so will that be the critical thing? Last time, Wilkie was the man to take out Thermite. They're going to be a little more prepared for that this time. 
Yeah, and seeing as that basement's, or the bomb's gonna be inside of the basement, we saw Wilkie up top once more. Now, is he gonna try to get a camera out, or is he just being the actual roamer on his team? Yeah, I mean, they may want to consider clearing him out this time, although that does burn up a lot of time trying to clear out all those top floors. Now we see the electrified battery on the wall, which gets taken out here by Young. He's gonna also open up the doorway into A-bomb. That saves them from having to have a, uh, that was nice there. Saves them from having to have a Thatcher to try and help with that. He's going to drop immediately, throws another. Lots of ADS is going to prevent the nades from going in. They obviously want that barbed wire to survive and make sure no smoke goes in as well. Well played. I like that ADSs are stackable now, so you can see situations where you can't just throw a whole bunch of smokes and call it a day. Now that is a great cam placement. You got a lot of intel. You saw two were entrenched, two were above the lockers, and now you've got three inside a trench. So you've got to be prepared for Wilkie to do that again. This is... This is where Wilkie just needs to jump out the window, just like we saw Canadian do last time. He can dominate the three down in Trent right now. Yeah, he's got to be prepared for that. If he has a shotgun especially, just jump down there and you know slam him all with that. But the question is, he's going to wait for the right time here. And are they going to catch him completely off guard? It doesn't look like they're really prepared for an attack from behind or above. Yeah, now Vapo's on first floor, but we also have Young down here in Trent moving on in. Now Vapo's inside of the piano room. He will be droned out there by Canadian. And if he exposes himself through that window one more time, I think we're going to see a dead Vapo. That's definitely got to irritate him and make him waste a lot of time trying to fight that drone there. And they're going to continue to drone him. So there is the nade from NVK. Or the, yeah, NVK is going to throw a nade in. Just barely scratches him. And Necrox is going to pick off Wilkie, though, in the meantime. NVK still holding on. Capitao is going to move on in and will face the bullets onto Vapo and finish him off. There it is, Vapo getting that kill on the Canadian. It's now a four on five. 60 seconds left to go. It's really slowing down the attack. Even if they do kill Vapo, it's still worth it. The amount of damage he's done. Ooh, NVK looking a little bit too much. And NV oh, we have Vapo trying to escape. Turns his back. And Necrox, or I'm sorry, NVK pulls out the gun and finishes him off from behind. Good on Vapo, though, for burning up that much time. Now we've got NVK able to get Kato Mistaro. The diffuser goes down. NVK gets a triple kill as he moves on down. That is a 4K from NVK this round. Definitely MVP of the round. Getting all those kills. Yeah, he burned a lot of time up there fighting Vapo, but once he did and then just lay down the lock coming down those stairs, I, don't, I just don't think they were prepared for those particular gunfights, and he won all of them. Definitely not. Vapo realized he ran out of bullets, tried to escape over into the dining hall, you saw him pick it off and then move on down the main stairwell and picked off three kills. Yep. It looks like we may see a similar strategy uh, to the previous time from Continuum, bringing that castle, playing this top TV room. But obviously they're going to be a little more prepared. I don't think we're going to see Canadian jump out the window and get a 3K again. But obviously he does want to play that top floor strongly. Mm -hmm. He's going to play it the same way. We've seen a lot of great plays from this team in doing so. A little more even kills from uh, Zisu, whereas uh, a few more players are kind of doing a lot of the work in terms of kills on Continuum. Yeah, and I think, like you said earlier, what we're going to see is a very similar defensive hold to what we saw the last time Continuum held here. We see the castle reinforcing the same doorway, same windows that he did before. And is he going to jump out and get another 3K like he did before? Or it looks like he prepared that window, at he, least. He prepared the window. Whether or not it's going to come in handy or whether or not Zisu's going to be expecting it is soon to be told. Now, they've got to be prepared for some of the strats that Zisu used last time that had Canadian not done what he'd done might have worked fairly well. So I, I imagine Zisu as well is going to be a little more prepared for that. Okay, they didn't bring thought. Montaigne on accident this time, though, at least. They did not bring him on accident here. We so have. that could be a big difference in terms of uh, last time they did have that as kind of a weakness on their attack. I think I think that will be. I think when you go all in on a particular strat, assuming that the bombsite's going to be in a particular location, if it's not, it can be very psychologically demeaning when, when you can't get that the strat you wanted to. Yeah, and, and I think uh, Zizu has a pretty good strat for this attack, and if they're able to pull it off, although Retro almost took Wilkie's head off a second ago, then uh, you know this could be another tie round for them. Mm -hmm. We have Boonty here upside down around the south window, right by the back access. This is going to be the kids' room trying to clear out any kind of bandit or mute jammer, but there's nothing there for them to worry about. I like this play here, this upside down angle on the stairs, trying to take advantage of an angle that benefits the outside attacker more than the inside defender. So seeing that as how the wall got opened up, we're going to have Katie Mistara moving on over to Garage. He's going to hopefully get the wall opened up into the bomb site here by A-Bomb. Yeah, it looks like they really want to push for this kitchen attack here. All of them loading up in the garage. They've got Thermite to try and blow that wall. They see it's cleared, but they know the drop hatch is open, which is going to be a big risk for them as the defenders are playing upstairs pretty strong. Yep, and so here we have three attackers. You've got Thatcher, you've got Vapo, Vapo, Shatta, and Boonsy all inside a garage. 
We, as well as Katie Mistaro. So you have four attackers here inside the garage. They're going to be pushing in. This is where the push is going to come from. With a minute 20 left to go, still a five on five. It's going to be up to the defenders on second floor to hold on to this bomb site. Now, last time this garage push is what cost them once Kennedy was able to get behind them. But obviously, they're going to be a little more prepared for that. Although it looks like they're almost all looking into that kitchen. If you could just get the right timing on it, you could shoot a lot of them back. I, I like what we're seeing here from the defensive setup. There's not a single defender inside of the A-bomb. Young, however, will take a couple grenades and bullets and will fall. He's down but not out just yet. That's going to be Valkyrie. They're really watching this through the floor, through the drop hatches, as many angles as they can. Ooh, and there is going to be Boonsie coming around the corner with the head shield on, able to get NVK looking through the drop hatch. He tries to go for the second kill on the retro, lands a couple bullets, and the head shield will finally get destroyed. Poor Young just laying down there wounded. No one able to go get him. Here comes another oh. fight. Boonsie goes for round two and gets the kill on the retro. It's now a five on three. Five on two now as Vapo picks up the shots onto Necrox. Looking at the Valkyrie, he's able to secure and get rid of that. Canadian still above. Diffuser will be planted inside of the B-bomb. And Canadian now has to rotate downstairs. It's now all up to Canadian as Young has been down but not out. He tries oh. to fall and he will be killed off by Wilkie before his feet even touch the ground. Well played, using that hatch against them, knowing they're going to be rushed, rotating down, that the stairs are unsafe, that they're probably going to use the drop hatch. Canadian just wasn't in the right place at the right time. His angles in the floor were just not set up for that plant. Uh -huh. I mean, they probably should have known where that plant was going to go for the most part, as that was where they were pushing. But hey, you know, that defense was a great defense the previous time, but set up for it this time with them knowing it, them coming in, and that Blackbeard just laying down the law from that garage, holding back, taking his kills before they made a push and really paid off. Agreed. And so what we're getting into here is potential for another overtime round here where it's three on three. Next point's going to be over a match point for a team. But seeing as how these teams are going back and forth, back and forth, we might be getting into overtime here in just a moment. If any map's going to bring overtime based on what we've seen so far, this is going to be the one. The trades are just it, definitely both teams showing that they were prepared to play this map. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're going to have to defend TV Room as well. They were able to do it successfully last time. TV Room has actually been working out mostly for the defenders. But as we saw last round, there is attack strategies that clearly work on it. Yeah, and so what we're going to see, we're going to see Boonsie and Chate upstairs now. That's going to be the smoke and pulse. Now, the last time a pulse was up here, it was Continuum, and he jumped out the... Or it was, I believe it was Canadian. Yeah. Five seconds left. That window jump that again. That window yeah. jump, yeah. So he picked it off, jumped outside, and was able to get the kills. But again, bomb's not downstairs anymore. It's now on first floor. So taking a look here, Canadian's looking like he's going to drone out top floor for his team. I wouldn't be surprised if he pushes on in, as we already do see him working his way there. Young's outside by the garage entrance, going to jump on top of the tires, move on over. It looks like they might be trying to take a bit of control of the top floor before they work their way down. But Shat is prepared for that, bringing out this pulse. And here we have Chateau looking. He spotted two of them. Looks like it was going to be Canadian and Retro going upstairs to the very top platform. Last time that Pulse was able to take out that Blackbeard with a nice shotgun to the face. Assuming that doesn't happen this time, they should have a little bit better of a chance. Mm -hmm. A lot of good droning going on, though. They really want to clear this top floor. Top floor is one that's kind of hard to hold, uh, but there are some interesting angles from it here, but they're just giving it away for free, they, it's not really worth them holding except for perhaps from the stairwell, and that's what NVK is prepared for. Yep. There is really only one stairwell in the inside here. This is it, and that does make it a little bit difficult to push down because the third floor does not have any drop hatches. Now you already have barbed wire on the stairs, so it's going to be costly for NVK to try to rush on down. There's three or four rooms that he's going to have to pay attention to as he goes down the stairs. Yeah, the crossfire can be real. At least he's able to use his nades there to clear up some of the barbed wire on the stairs rather than having to use his hammer. But it is going to give away that he's clearly coming down. And Vapo's right on the other side of the wall from him. You see NVK very cautious of that kid's room. Vapo's waiting for the peak. He might get a little aggressive here and just go for a headshot. But Canadian's already pushed his way in. Able to get the shot on the Boonsie without falling down this time. Wilkie's able to get one. He gets two on the Canadian and then Necrox. With that, Boonsie has been injured inside a kitchen. You've got Shatid dropping to try to save him and res him back up. It's now a five on three. A minute, fe a minute ten left to go. Wilkie, uh, as before, playing in the top floor, definitely helped save this round for his team so far. Great kills for him. The Ooh, accidental knife. He looked at the right spot but got a little jiggled as he tried to change weapons up. And VK able to get both the kills on the Vapo and Wilkie. Took a lot of punishment for it, though. It's not looking great when it is a three-on-three three here, but some great plays by NVK we've seen so far. I do believe he has the potential to make this work. 
And so with NVK trading it back off, that becomes a three on three. You see Boonsy right underneath of him, looking up through the drop hatch. He hears him. However, Young's able to come in from below and get the kill onto him. With that, it's now all up to Katie Mistaro and Shatta, both inside of the garage. And Shatta, I'm sorry, we've got Young inside of the garage here with Retro. NVK's above. Shatta's on those back stairs. You have Katie Mistaro inside a piano. And we're going to see Retro moving on in with the Diffuser, ready to get the plant down. Shatta overexposes himself, will be downed by Young and will be picked off later on here. Katie Mistaro takes a couple bullets as he's inside of the garage hall, able to get one kill on NVK, comes around, sees Retro's head, cannot get the shots off though. Young's looking from garage, trying to get the crossfire here onto Katie. This is definitely going to be hard for him to pull off here, but he tries, tries his best, shooting that shield with an MP5, just never seems to work. Just can't get it. I mean, when you've got an immovable and impenetrable objects such as the bed of a truck right on up to the Blackbeard shield you're basically a Montane with an assault rifle attached to you so yeah. very difficult if Katie Mistara were to try and fight that well we've seen that work twice now mm -hmm. so I imagine if uh, they go to play TV room again they've got to be a little more prepared for that but they can go back down to the basement so down they will go and uh, if they can win this we will be at that overtime it is match point however if uh, Izizu can take this or if I, I rather if CTM could take this, actually. yeah, that would be. This is match point for Continuum. Yeah. So if Continuum wins this, exactly. they will advance to the grand finals held tomorrow morning. Yeah. So Zisu are gonna have to win this round if they want any chance of being here tomorrow. Now taking a look at the scoreboards, they're actually pretty even compared to each other. Yeah. There's not one or two shining stars on a particular team, but. Again, this this just goes to highlight how even these teams pretty much are, especially on this map. Especially when there's a lot of trading going on. Nice long kill hole there, trying to get as much as of angle as possible. Previously, we'd seen Kinemasari use like a much bigger hole to try and defend A from those green pallets over there. Interesting how Necrox is just opening up the whole wall to give himself a variety of angles. But if they come in low, it could be easy for them to get in mm -hmm. because that the angles were almost all headshot height. So yeah, Canadian's gonna go back upstairs to his office spot, which is where he was so viable last time. And I, I see it being exactly a, a similar strategy. He's going to stay inside of the office, stay inside of the, the bathroom, and just be monstrous and causing a distraction and potentially getting a numerous amount of kills. Yeah, and this is definitely riding on CTM to take this round and close it all out so that they can go back here tomorrow and play again. So they're going to have to play it smart, not do anything stupid, time everything just right. But the attacker is going to be pretty prepared for it. They're not going for that Montane plan again, though, thankfully. <laughs> I don't think that would work a second time, and not that it ever worked a first. Yeah, so here we have, looks as though Wilkie and Vapo are both going to be droning out the majority of first floor. They clear it all out, and they've got to assume there's one or two lurkers upstairs. They have to play, they either have to go after them or ignore them and cover the flank. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. We're going to see if the Roamers are able to play their timing well, because that is going to be critical for this NVK and Canadian being super pivotal both times in the defense of this. Now, Katie Massaro is going to utilize both of his thermo thermite charges, gets both of the locker walls opened up. Now he's an attacker. He doesn't need to play as cautiously as he has in the past when he does have his charges. Uh, but we, as we know, Katie Massaro is a great thermite player, so it, he is definitely still going to use that gun. Yeah, it's almost like he's taken the shackles off. I've gotten both of the walls opened up. Now I can do what I've been known to do, and that's to be an attacker, get the kills that my team needs me to get. And that's what's great about being a good thermite player, right? Once you know you've done your job, you can just focus on those shots. But it does look like uh, Vapo wants to clear out NVK, does do so. With that, NVK dropped from that first floor, from the second floor, into that dining hall and got finished off here by Vapo. Now the nade from underneath, Vapo's hoping to do a similar kill there. Ooh, and Canadian able to get out of the way. That is going to give away pretty clearly where Vapo is playing here, if you didn't already know from NVK earlier, and his pulse device. He's given a lot of intel to his team, though. Is he going to be able to jump out or do something like Wilkie did? But obviously, he can't kill the thermite anymore. As it, or I mean, in terms of uh, stopping them from doing anything with it. I think. I think what we're going to see Canadian do is just keep an eye on the back stairwell, wait for a good opportunity to jump out. We're going to see him jump out once more. There are 45 seconds left to go. It's a five on four. Shatta moves into locker room. You've got Retro on top of the ammo crate, almost ready to see that. Necrox able to get Kata Mistaro though, oh. and you're going to see Neck or Retro getting Shatta. It's now a five four on three. 
30 seconds left to go. Canadian is just raring to drop out here. He's going to jump out here in just a moment. Young picks up Wilkie. It is now all up to Boonsie and Vapo. Vapo's going to get one on the Young. Retro is able to get it traded off. It is now all up to Boonsie. A three on one. Boonsie has to get this if they want to have another chance here at getting to the grand finals. If not, Continuum will be going. Boonsie's inside the diffuser site, but he doesn't have the diffuser in hand yet. And we have Canadian on stairwell. Knows Boonsie's there. 10 seconds left to go. He does not have too much time. He's wasting all. He's going to go for the plant. Canadian's going to move on in. Gets the kill. And Continuum goes on into the finals. They are heading to tomorrow's grand finals against next winner. That was...